right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, coming to you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Michael Anthony, who is actually in Guadalajara, Mexico right now. How are you doing, Michael? Man, I'm so good, John. Thank you so much for the time, my friend. Excellent, excellent. And, and um, Michael's uh, company is Think Unbroken. And uh, you work with a lot of trauma victims and, uh, and people with childhood traumas and stuff and to help them become the best version of themselves to, be, to become unbroken, if you like. Um, you have a, a, a pretty heavy background, obviously, you know, being a, a trauma survivor yourself, son of drug addicts and abusers and on all of that. And, um, you know, you've been through, you know, drug addiction at a very early age, alcoholism and all of that. But you've come through it. And now, as we were just discussing briefly before coming on air now, I mean, you work with people who have all of these, you know, traumas and everything, but you you work with them to help them obviously overcome it and get their mindset right. But you say that it's a very uplifting experience for you to do this. Yeah, you know, John, it's really enthralling for me because I, I've been there, right? You, you mentioned it briefly. My mother was a drug addict. She cut my finger off when I was four years old. My stepfather is super abusive. We were homeless for most of my childhood. Um, I'm biracial, black and white, was raised and adopted by a racist grandmother. We literally had a copy of Hitler's autobiography, Mein Kampf, on our living room table, right? So that's baseline. That's 12 years old. I started doing drugs, started stealing cars, running with guns. My best friends were getting murdered, going to prison. Like, I have seen it all, man. And to be able to do what I do today is is really a godsend. And it kind of came to me twofold. One, because people were reaching out and saying, what you're doing is impacting my life. It's making me feel like I'm not alone in this. And then it turned into, can you help me? Mm -hmm. And then in that process, it kind of did what it does, right? As you are in these in the throes of this. And, and it is an honor to be able to serve, right? To go from this place where it was take, take, take to now it's give, give, give. My life has purpose and meaning and there's good days, there's bad days like everyone in every profession. Yeah, so, uh, so Michael, like what was that moment or what was that moment or that process is probably more than a moment that you went through, I mean, you call it your mirror moment that you went through where you finally, uh, you know, wanted to self-actualize and change your mindset and, and create a different life for yourself. Uh, what was that moment like? Yeah, you know, and I didn't know any of those words a decade ago, right? right? I was laying in bed 11 o'clock in the morning, smoking a joint, watching the CrossFit games while eating chocolate cake and weighing 350 pounds. John, if that's not rock bottom, dude, I don't know what <laughs> is. And so the, the next day I'm getting up, I'm going to do a conference. I'm, I'm putting on a size 4XL button up shirt, size 47 pants and looking at this very fat round face in the mirror and having this moment of realizing that I wasn't living up to my own expectations. Because when I was nine years old, we were so poor that our water got turned off. Imagine being in America and you're so poor that you don't have running water in your home. And so I'd have to go across the street and steal water from the neighbor's house so that we had water in our home. And I'm having this moment where I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm recalling this and thinking to myself, you are not living up to the expectations of the promises that you made when you were a child that you would never have a life like this. Now, given my life was great, I had a, a great job, a great girlfriend, great car, all the clothes, but my life was atrocious. And I recognized that I'd been letting myself down. So in that moment, what happened was the beginning of the journey. And that set me down this path of, okay, I'm going to get serious about therapy because I've been wasting thousands of dollars a year going and telling my therapist what I thought he wanted to hear because that's reasonable. And then it was about really stepping into personal growth. How do I actually figure out who I am? Because many trauma survivors, we grew up dissociated. We're not allowed to step into our wants, needs, interests, values, or, or anything about who it is that we are. We have no personal boundaries. We have no goals, aspirations, purpose, things like that. Effectively, John, when I look at the Michael sitting here talking to you right now, I'm a caricature of the idea of the person that I wanted to be. But that took a lot of defining that roadmap of like, this is who I am, and then actually doing something about it. And that look, that's something that's universal. 
Everyone yeah. has this moment in which we have to make a declaration in the extent of what are you willing to do to have the life that you want to have? And until that moment, that mirror moment, when I finally kind of put my foot up my own butt and said, get your stuff together, man, I'd never really done anything other than chase money because I thought that was the only solution to life. If poverty is because we're poor and my life is like this, then money must be the solution. It was never about personal growth. It was never about healing. And I had no idea how to step into that path. And so a decade removed from now, from that, excuse me, it's really been about just learning and discovering every day and staying the course no matter what. Yeah, and and uh, and uh, as uh, you know, I know some people have been through major um, changes in their life, you know, and uh, and the root causes of that go back to you know traumas in childhood. One of the things that they have always said to me is there there is that moment when you suddenly realize that you were perhaps um, you know st you know that you're trapped maybe in that spot that you haven't like matured or grown up like most people have and. That that's part of what you need to face is um, you almost need to accelerate and, and go through a growth that people normally go through over a period of time, but you've got to go through it maybe a lot faster. Yeah, well, and, and I think what happens is in that moment, one of the most important things that you do is you acknowledge that your life is not in accordance with the person that you're capable of being. And I believe that most people are terrified of their own potential because on the backside of doing some really difficult things, you may actually become and have and do the things that you want, that you desire, that you need in your life. And so, you know, I, I wish it were easy and something that you could simplify and make, method, you know, methodical. But the reality is we're all on a different journey. We all have a different pathway. But the one thing that we all have in common, people have had that moment where they've created change, is they've been willing to acknowledge that everything that happens in their life from this moment forward is up to them. Yeah. And I think that's so that is so powerful, that idea of accountability and realizing that, uh, you know, that you are accountable for your, your situation in life. Now, you're not accountable for the things that other people do to you, but you're accountable for how you react to them, etc. Um, and one of the things that you just I, I'm just because I just made a note, because this is the thing that I often talk about, too, is this idea of. Uh, people often talk about fear of failure, but fear of success, and you just mentioned that there is that fear of here's what I want to become, but then it holds me back from becoming that because I fear, okay, if I become that person, then all of these things change and letting go and, and embracing that change can be quite terrifying. So and some people stay stuck where they are because they're actually afraid of what happens when they succeed in becoming what they want to become, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, 100%. I mean, I look at my own life, and that is exactly on par with my journey and my experience, because, you know, many of us think about this, and, and this is almost universal at this point, since the Industrial Revolution, we've all been put in square pegs, and we say, this is where you fit. Don't color outside the lines, don't do this, don't do that. You have to shape this mold. Well, on the backside of that, you start to get these things embedded in you. You're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're not capable enough, handsome enough, tall enough, lovable enough, 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 enough. And so what happens is we fall down into this spiral where we accept failure as the norm, where we just go, oh, I guess it's my life. My life should be terrible. I should have a bad relationship and a dead end job and a car that won't start on cold winter days. <laughs> because that's how it works. Those other people, those rich people, famous people, celebrity people, people with the nice houses and cars and who love themselves, they must know something I don't know. The reality is that they don't. They don't know anything you don't know. The only difference is that they've made a decision that they're willing to see what's on the backside of the effort. And I think the most important thing that we can do is just sit with that. We're gonna fail. John, I fail every day, literally every day. I probably made 5,000 mistakes already today, but I still continue to move forward no matter what, because the only thing I care about is what if? What if on the backside of all of this, it might actually happen, man? And that fires me up because I've been to rock bottom and most people have had a moment of rock bottom where it doesn't get worse. And so then what do you do from there? I don't know what else you do other than go, okay, I'm going to move forward. If people want to hate, let them hate. I'm yeah. going to choose. This is really important, John. I'm going to choose to live my life on my term. And if people don't like the way I color outside the lines, then they don't get a seat at my table. Yeah. And I love that you've said that because I do think that's another major thing that holds people back is that 
they they may have accumulated these people around them and they may be toxic people they may be people who don't want you to change or whatever but at the end of the day you're responsible for keeping them there uh, and they're serving some kind of purpose for you and until you realize that and you as you said you make the decision to move forward and you say and if the consequences of that is that i shrink the universe around me well so be it because i can't let anything hold me back and i don't need them anymore to fulfill that crazy toxic purpose that they did yeah you know and there's something about that moment in which you remove yourself from people who just seethe and take from you in which you're really starting to tap into your power and another way that you could phrase that in a very simplified manner is it's called you're standing up for yourself which is oh my god could that be more terrifying john you dare stand up for yourself, not in this society. Let me tell you what, the most important thing that you can do is put your feet on the ground and say, I declare this is who I am. And if that's not okay with you, then you don't get to be a part of my journey. Because one of the most important things that we can do is learn to take care of ourselves first. There's nothing wrong with that. And we live in this weird idea of a society where the nomenclature is built on you don't actually matter, even though we tell you that you do. The reality yeah. is that the only way that's true is you have to make sovereignty within yourself. Yeah, no, that's that's beautifully put, uh, Michael, because, yeah, we do live in this in this strange in, in a very strange society. And now with social media and everything, it's gotten even more wacky. And um, and I think and I think here here's what I think is um, what a lot of people avoid nowadays. And they avoid those times of being with themselves, being with their own thoughts, maybe cutting out all the noise and distraction and actually doing some some self discovery, because that because that seems to go against the pervasive culture, which is saying, no, no, be distracted all the time, you know, be online, be connected, be blah, blah, blah. And and I think people have lost almost lost the ability to be with themselves. And I think that's so critical. Yeah, I, I dare you to turn your phone off for five hours. I dare you and see how incredibly uncomfortable it is, right? And, and that's starting to get ingrained in us and that's super dangerous, man. Yeah. I, I think one of the most important, let me rephrase that. I know one of the most important elements of the journey for me has been becoming intrinsic and having an understanding of myself in a solitary, right? Yeah. With, not solitary, but within solitude, right? Sitting yeah. in this moment in times where I can sit down and I go, let me map my life. Let me just see what this thing's all about. And it's within those moments that you really start to discover who you are. And it's uncomfortable. It is yeah. scary. Up here, in here, in your head, in your mind, in that place where you have to live, it can be scary, but it also is so beautiful once you recognize that you actually have a bit of control in this. Yeah, no, you're 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 hundred percent correct. I mean, it is scary, but it is it is that control. But it, and and I and I do think it's a liberate. It's so liberating when you do spend time with yourself and and sort of you know realize who you are. And I think that's a lot of the 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 way people get so caught up and so distracted and everything. I do feel that below a lot of that is. Uh, not dealing with some stuff. Now, it doesn't have to be as as traumatic as it's the stuff that you go through, even the stuff that you deal with with other people. But I do think everybody carries some baggage with them that if they examined it um, and maybe figured out a way to let go of it, they'd have such happier lives. Yeah, I mean, think about the pressure and the weight that you carry when you know that you have something that you need to address. It just eats you alive. I mean, if you go and read Vanderkolk's book, The Body Keeps the Score, or Sarno's book, How to Heal Back Pain, the, the oh, thing that's fascinating about your body is that it stores those experiences, right? And this isn't like woo-woo stuff. This is real stuff. Like if you carry the weight, it will consume you. And so finding the space to alleviate that pressure, to turn that valve just a little bit, to get it out, even if that means doing it like within the, the retrospect of like having time for yourself, you've got to do something. Yeah, uh, it's funny you mentioned Dr. Sarno because I mean I, I've read his books and I actually also visited his uh, his main um, the person who worked with underneath him, um, who is based in LA, who did all that uh, tension myositis syndrome that research, mm. and and basically the um, and I did it for back pain at the time way back when, and it is very very true that your that your body you will have weaknesses in your body like maybe you've got a, a disc that's out of place or whatever it is, um, but your your body 
and your brain will say, okay, rather than me, John, deal with this issue that's here, we're going to help you distract you and we're going to transfer transfer this to a part of your body and you're going to be in pain. So you're going to be so focused on this pain, you don't have to deal with that. And those are the things we have to overcome. And it is amazing when you figure those things out, how the pain dissipates. Yeah, I'll give you another example, which many, many people experience. At the highest threshold of my, stre my stress, I was having five panic attacks a day, man. Right. Five, like on the ground, crippled, like I'm dying experiences for years until I started to release the trauma and release the things that I kept. And that, you know, obviously that came from, you know, journaling and therapy and men's mm -hmm. group and, you know, the whole list goes on and on and on. But the, the catalyst for that changing was really just stepping into the understanding that I was just caring too much. Yeah. And that's why I think it's fascinating for people listening to this is that maybe to take a, to take a look at at uh, one's life and say, you know, what are the things like, am I, do I have panic attacks? Like, do I have, you know, in unexplained pain that never goes away do i have all do i have all these things going on that are distracting me and and maybe overwhelming me and maybe ask yourself what what, what could be behind all of this yeah and you know if you're going to do that I, I think it's really important if you're going to step into that pathway you have to ask yourself the question is can you do that with compassion and with grace because we are so quick to pull the trigger on ourselves and go, this is my fault, this is my fault, this is my fault. And sure, there's culpability in everything that happens in our lives, especially if you're an adult, you're listening to this, you've made mistakes, own up to it, fine, whatever. But can you step into it with compassion and grace and not shame and guilt and just look at it and acknowledge it and go, okay, these are points of data from failure. I haven't like destroyed my life. I haven't done anything so bad. I can't rise up from the ashes of it, but can I measure those experiences and go, okay, now I have a new understanding of who I am within the environment of the space that I exist. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And that idea as well is maybe about forgiving yourself. I mean, I think that's, as you said, we're very, very good at punishing ourselves. And yes, we should, we should acknowledge and take responsibility for our actions and all of that. But eventually then you have to say, okay, you have to forgive yourself and not just, you know, hold that with you. Yeah, you do. And, and that's hard, right? It's hard because we're taught that we're not allowed to forgive ourselves. And especially if you're a man in Western societies, you're not even allowed to be emotional to begin with. So good luck to you, right? The thing is that you have to be willing to step into the idea of the understanding that it's okay for you to be a human being and have human being emotions. Male, female, non-binary, it doesn't matter. You are a human being. You are allotted the ability to have those emotions, but to create that capacity and to be able to step into it now that's a whole nother story that's we could talk mm -hmm. about that all day yeah. but just acknowledging that you're allowed man that's a game changer yeah and, and it's funny isn't it because again you're you're saying that you're 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 basically giving yourself permission and and as you said like you know maybe maybe how you've been brought up maybe the influences the culture the cultural norms um, maybe that is a huge step forward for you to actually give yourself permission to do something that perhaps you have at least perceived that the world says, no, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. And, and think about this. If it is true, which I believe it is, that we're the sum total of all of our experiences leading up mm -hmm. to this moment, then that means everything that's ever happened in our life informs who we are at this time. Now, think about this. In order to get to where you want to go, you have to understand how you got to where you are without having a direction of of a compass of a navigation of something to tell you where you're going i.e a self-defined narrative based on the understanding of who you are then nothing's going to change yeah yeah and i think that's such an incredibly important point because i also think it, if you just even take that as a broader point in in today uh we see uh, people just generally not even learning the lessons of history because you know we were repeating things that we shouldn't be repeating and and it's the same for as you said individually if you don't look back on where you've come from and all the experiences you've had and and and, and maybe analyze them a little bit and and see how they've added up to who you are today you're never you can never really plot a path forward uh unless you know where you've come from 
Yeah, exactly. And, and in acknowledging where you've come from, that's potential to step into greatness because like realistically, we all have a, a different journey. Fine. So yeah. be it. But we all have potential. Like if you're listening to this right now, you have potential in ways that people never have because you are already in a far more advanced techno technological state than the vast majority of human beings who have ever existed on planet Earth. Yeah. And so the thing that I always think about, John, and, and one of my mottos in the way that I live my life is no excuses, just results. Like at this point, at some point, eventually you're gonna have to make a declaration and regardless of where you've come from, with that acknowledgement, you're gonna have to do something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that idea of no excuses because let's face it, we're fantastic at giving ourselves excuses and get out of jail free cards and coming up with every reason under the sun why something isn't our fault. So I love that idea of of facing up to, you know, giving yourself no excuses because then, I mean, you, you take, you know, kick away the safety net and or the training, kick off the training reels, whatever metaphor you want to use. Um, and yeah, it's scary. But again, as we said, I mean, that's how you grow up, right? You kick off the yeah, training I mean wheels think about anything great you've ever done in your life. It all started with baby steps. It all started with kind of just figuring it out, tapping your toe and being terrified of it. And then one day you go, oh, I got it. I can do this mm -hmm. thing. Well, but that applies to everything until you die always, right? And if you step into it with that mentality, while also leveraging the idea that you are the only person in control of your life, then that means potentially on a long enough time frame, you can have everything that you've ever wanted to have, right? I think about my life and my goal to ultimately put myself out of business. I want Think Unbroken to be obsolete, right? Meaning that we've created so much healing in society mm -hmm. that there's no point for me to even exist in terms of a business structure, right? I understand that on a long enough time frame that will happen. Realistically, I will probably be dead because we have hundreds of years of generational trauma that we have to work through. However, because I am so clearly defined on that goal being the narrative in which I exist, I move towards that every single day, no matter what. And so, so much of it about is just making a declaration to yourself of like, what is it that I want? What do I want to accomplish? How do I want to live my life? How do I want to exist? And what am I willing to do to have that? And then in the moments, because you will fall back as, as sure as I know the sun will rise tomorrow, you will fall down. And the thing about that is, can you take that as a point of data, measure that, and then just keep moving forward? Yeah, and you know exactly, Michael, and as you said, uh, you should have you should have big dreams you should have big goals um, you should want to do all the, but then you should look at what's the next best step putting one foot in front of the other because i do think sometimes people say yes i want to do all of that and then they look at it and they think it's so far away that they become kind of paralyzed and they don't take the step forward and they don't realize as you said that every journey is like baby steps baby steps and then eventually you know you get there and i think that's i think people know that intellectually uh but they still often fall down at the beginning because they just are staring so much at the goal that's so far ahead of them yeah you know i often think about how fast food is probably one of the worst things to happen to humanity because it's mm -hmm. instant gratification right yeah. now you snowball that into everything into the way that we live and exist and now it's instant gratification after instant gratification when you think about it the the people who have ever created or done anything great they have had to take a long time to get to that yeah. accomplishment, right? What happens is we look at this and we go, this goal feels so obtuse that I'm probably not gonna reach it anyway, so I'm not even gonna try that hard. Yeah, Realistically, yeah. what I tell my clients is make a goal so incredibly grandiose that's tied to who it is that you are as a human being, that you are willing to die on the journey and in time, you will reach that goal. I'm not saying it'll be tomorrow because it definitely won't. Hell, it probably won't even be 10 years. But eventually, if you're willing, because here's the thing, John, can you make that goal have so much value in your life that you are willing to do whatever it takes to have that? right? And sometimes that means creating goals of being in service, not necessarily monetary, because I know many people, they go, I want to make a million dollars a year. And I go, why? Define it. Why are you on this journey? Like, why is it that you want to do this? Why are you willing to fall down and get back up again and again and again for this goal? 
Yeah, no, I, I, I totally, that's, a, that's very well put because I do think, um, and it's a great place for us to just end today because I do think that that is one thing that everybody listening could do today is ask yourself the why. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Uh, as you said, if you have a goal to to earn a million dollars or whatever, it doesn't matter whatever it is, asking yourself the why, because I do think often we set these goals and we never ask why. We just They just seem like the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that only works long enough. Yeah, exactly. Listen, Michael, this has been fantastic. All of Michael's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so you can find me on all the social medias as Michael Unbroken. I have the Michael Unbroken podcast, as well as my website is thinkunbroken.com. And I'm a coach, mentor, advocate, international speaker, and author for adult survivors of childhood trauma. Yeah, listen, fantastic. Listen, uh, absolutely fantastic work you're doing. And uh, and I would encourage anybody who has any issues or whatever is to to reach out to, to reach out to Michael. You know, get, we only get one shot at this world. Um, you know, don't don't suffer it any longer than you need to. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.